Welcome to the lesson on acute coronary syndrome. In this video, we'll discuss acute coronary syndrome care using the STEMI chain of survival. For individuals with acute coronary syndrome, or ACS, proper care starts during the call to EMS. First responders must be aware of and look for signs of ACS. Quick diagnosis and treatment yield the best chance to preserve healthy heart tissue. It's very important that as a healthcare provider, you recognize individuals with potential ACS in order to initiate evaluation, appropriate triage, and timely management. The STEMI chain of survival begins with recognizing symptoms and activating EMS. Then, the individual receives EMS pre-hospital care. Next, they receive ED evidence-based care followed by reperfusion with PCI or fibrolytics. Lastly, the individual receives quality post-MI care. The goals of ACS treatment call for early EMS communication, which allows the emergency department personnel and cardiac catheterization lab and staff to prepare for the individual. Once the ACS patient arrives at the receiving facility, established protocols should direct care. The shorter the time until reperfusion, the greater the amount of heart tissue that can be saved, and the more optimal the overall outcome. Major Adverse Cardiac Events, or MACE, includes death and non-fatal myocardial infarction. Life-threatening complications of ACS include ventricular fibrillation, pulseless ventricular tachycardia, bradyarrhythmias, cardiogenic shock, and pulmonary edema. EMS should have the capacity to perform ECGs on scene and on the way to the hospital. The receiving hospital should be made aware of possible ACS, especially ST elevation myocardial infarction elevation, or STEMI, and non-ST elevation myocardial infarction, or NSTEMI. Refer to figure 16 in your corresponding ACLS manual for a brief summary of goals of ACS treatment. This concludes our lesson on acute coronary syndrome. Next, we'll review acute stroke.